So uh, welcome to uh, to Hot Sauce Sports with Terry Tam. You're, uh, we're, we have a special guest on the line. We have uh, Bakari Sanya. I think he's now he's a current ambassador for the Montreal Impact, former player of the Montreal Impact, uh, Arsenal Football Club, and uh, the French national team as well. Uh, Bakari, how's it going, buddy? Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm really good. I'm here in Montreal. I'm staying home, uh, like everyone should, and uh, I'm just waiting for that uh, crazy time to pass on. But uh, so far, so good. I'm good. I'm here with my family, and we organize everything here at home. So you've moved uh, 100% to Montreal now? I did, yeah. yeah. I found uh, a nice place where I, where I can... I can stay, I can call that place home because, you know, as a sportsman, it's always difficult to settle somewhere, but uh, I was fortunate enough to, to find something I like, something uh, where my family could, um, could live and uh, where we feel good. So, thanks God to my friend, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Our <laughs> friend, Mark. My yeah. friend is someone from, is someone from Montreal, he's a nice guy and he became my friend, so through him I managed to, to find that place. Uh, Mark is uh, Mark is one of the best guys out there for sure. If anybody's looking for a real estate agent, Mark Arash, he's uh, somebody to go to. Um, so you moved here, you signed a contract with Montreal Impact. Now you decided to stay here. Uh, right now you're working for the Impact. You're an ambassador for them, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. After playing one and a half, I became an ambassador, which means I have to to look after the image of the club. I have to bring my experience because I I come from a bigger club in Europe. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was fortunate enough to train with with big coach and and to see a lot during my uh, my career. So if I can help the team or even the academy to to grow, it would be a pleasure and uh, it's a name for me to 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 manage to do this. Yeah, I'm very uh, I'm very aware of, uh, of who you are. I've been watching soccer my entire life. I'm a diehard uh, Liverpool fan and Olympiacos fan. So for me, uh, I've seen you play. You've uh, you've killed some of my teams and you've. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you've been you've been somebody that shuts down a lot of systems. Uh, so you played with Arsenal. You you played at first at Auxerre in France. You're from France, right? Uh, then you transferred over I to did, Arsenal. Yeah. What was it, what was it like switching over to one of the biggest clubs in the world at that point? Well, it was like a, like a dream, yeah. I must say, because Arsenal especially was a bit like the French club of uh, of England. You know, you had many French many French players playing playing for the club. The manager was French himself, and uh, I think it helped me to settle a bit more, a bit faster. You know, it's never easy whenever you change country because there is always a limit with the uh, with the language and and the way you have to adapt because you don't have time to adapt. You need to to perform straight away. But uh, reaching Arsenal, meeting so many French players, and by the way, they helped me through and. Uh, and even the manager, by the way, treating me made, made my life easier. But uh, I used to watch Arsenal as a kid. Yeah. When uh, Thierry Henry was there, when Biera was there, and, uh, and suddenly I was able and I had the, I was blessed enough to, to be able to wear the shirt. So it was a, a good blessing for me. It's a nice shirt for sure. You would have looked a lot better in Liverpool, in Liverpool red, that's for sure. But, uh, <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's just for me. Um so you so you never played with Henri, you played with him in France, but you didn't play with him in Arsenal? I played with him in Arsenal when he came back from, he came uh, back. from okay. MLS, actually. I think it was, uh, it was a break here in MLS in winter time. It was back in 2012, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, and he came and stayed with us for two months. He was allowed to play with us, he played some games, he scored some, some goals, but uh, he had to come back here also. Yeah. So I mean, Ari is uh, he's a legend, right? But you were part of like that second wave of Arsenal players, you know, the Ozils and 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 those guys. And you guys had you guys had your success and playing under a guy like a mastermind like Arsene Wenger must have been incredible for you. Yeah, he used to be like a, like a dad for us, you know. He was yeah. always positive, which is really important for us players. He was always happy, always with a big smile, and he used to come to the dressing room and talk with us. And I think we we had a good relation with him. And to me, it's vital. If you want to perform, you need to to understand the players, not only on the pitch, but off the pitch. You need to understand their life, what they've been going through, how good they are, how far, how good they feel, and and then you have to make a choice. But uh, he managed to to create a group 
a nice good spirit between all of us, and I think this is why we, we play free, free of mind, and we play with the uh, with desire to to perform and to to play nice football. And through uh, the years, I think we we did quite well. We're unfortunate not to to be successful, not winning trophies. Before I left, the only trophies I won was uh, was uh, my last final game, yeah. the the cup final, and uh, I wish I, I won more with the team. Yeah, you guys were close that one year. I forgot what year it was. You guys finished second. You weren't too far back behind. I think it was Man U or it could have been Man City that year. I'm trying to remember. But you guys had a really good chance at it and it was tough. I mean, the pre- English Premier League is the best league in the world, right? So It is. It is. Honestly, it's so difficult. Every single three days you have to play and perform. You know, you can't afford to lose. If you lose one game, it's like if you let the other team go and that, that's really what's happening. Now we can't afford to lose one game or even two if you want to be champion because yeah. all the teams around them are losing. Well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll bring it back to Liverpool, but last year Liverpool lost one game. It was to Man City, and it it was up until the last game of the year if they were going to win the, the championship or not. Um, so you have to be competitive. I mean, I always tell people I'd rather watch, let's say, Arsenal versus West Ham than watch maybe even West Ham versus, let's say, Sunderland than watch uh, Real Madrid versus another uh, one of the bottom teams in Spain because the, so- the soccer well, the in England is too good. different, you know. Yeah, the desire is different, the intensity is different. In every single team, you have good players. Yeah, and uh, the pace of the game is it's way faster than than any other league, and that's what makes the, the league so special. Because especially being on, on on the pitch and being close to the pitch, you you realize how intense it is and how dim- how uh, as full it is also. So you switched. You, you signed with Man City um, about eight nine years after you signed. Two thousand fourteen. Two thousand fourteen. So you signed with Man City. Yeah. What was the reason for the move? Was it because Arsenal just wasn't able to pay? Was it the the contract? Was it just fit? No, I never really cared about money. Yeah. I was happy with the contract I got. Uh, but the problem is, I believe at some point they underestimate myself. Mm-hmm. And they underestimate me, and and they, they didn't value it in myself enough, I believe, because I used to play every single game. I used to I used to be sick and play. I used to be to be injured and play also, and uh, I gave my life for the club. And at some point, I got disappointed, especially when I uh, I reached one one year before the end of my contract, and and the club didn't make any move. So at some point, I got upset and. I took it personal, you know. Of course. I took it personal, and uh, this is when probably I made the choice to leave. They came after, but in my head it was too late, you know. Something was gone. And you went to Man City, and that was what that was at the time when they they started pumping a lot of money into the team, right? So they started doing a lot. They started doing well. No, they already had. A, they already had their money, team, yeah. you know. Yeah, they already were champion twice. They already. <laughs> They already had everything, but uh, I got the opportunity to go and challenge myself, which I did. Of course. Because Sabaleta was a vice captain and he was playing uh, my position. Yeah. And uh, I, man- I managed to I managed to play at the end, but the first year was not was not easy because when you used to play every single game, and for some reason you're on the bench, while you don't even know why, sometimes it's not always easy to take. But I was ready for it. I was up for it. I kept training really hard, and, and just one year I managed to to be the the player who with more minutes played. So yeah, it was a satisfaction for me, and uh, I had a great time. If you had to do it all over again, would you do it the same way, or would you stay with Arsenal your entire time in the Prem? I would do the same. The same exactly. <laughs> I yeah. don't have any regrets. Any regrets. I left. I left because I believe my time at Arsenal was was over. You know, and I, th- um, I played with my heart. Yeah, and from the minute something was gone, you know, it was difficult for me to to be there and, and to be upset, you know. So you you played with France as well. Uh, you're French. Um, I find there's a lot of players yeah. from France that play in Arsenal. Is that the Henri factor, or is it just because they like to go get French players? No, I think uh, I believe France has the best academy in Europe, mm-hmm. and uh, and yeah, because the coach is French, he was probably able to see more games. From players coming from the best academies and yeah. cheap players, also you know we were all young when we, we played, and uh, he always tried to to keep a to keep an ethic. 
on the team, you know, not spending a lot of money, but have a quality team. And that's know? the that's the, so, that's the tough part with the English Premier League is that you always have to have uh, the best players, but you might not have the money that Man United, Man City, uh, you know, uh, Chelsea. You might not have that kind of money, right? So you're gonna have well, to go it, get the it young. It changed guys. a lot. Yeah, it changed a lot. Now, pretty much every single team has the money to spend. Yeah. You know. Because uh, the market has gone crazy, but back in the days it was different. Only my only only Chelsea has the finance had the financial power to bring any any player, you know. Yeah. But for the rest of the team, it was about doing smart moves, and I believe Arsenal was good at it because they used to take young players from 16, 17 years old and make them play, give them the chance, and these players used to perform, you know. I mean, yeah, it was crazy. I'm, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, Nasri, uh, he was one. He was a young. He was a young player that came up, and he came up through Arsenal, and he's he's still great. But he came up, and he was going to be like the next big thing. There was Arsenal's always had those young guys, but then it, it's just unfortunate because then I don't know if it was the same thing for you, but so when you get to that age, you're young, you play well, and then finally the other teams, the big clubs, they start noticing you. And did you get other than Man City? Did you get any calls from any teams in Spain, Germany, or anything? I did, yeah. yeah. I can imagine you did. <laughs> I yeah. did in 2012. I did in 2012, but I stayed in Arsenal. You stayed. And uh, and when I I reached the end of my contract, I had teams like uh, Inter Milan, Liverpool, nice, uh, Paris, like uh, many, many many teams. To be to be honest, what's but, the uh, my choice when? Yep. What's the hardest um, field to play at? Like the toughest place to in go Liverpool and play. It's difficult, you know. It's really difficult to play in, uh, in at Anfield. Anfield, the atmosphere is crazy. I don't know if you had the chance to go, but the atmosphere is unreal. Not and, yet. Uh, even the players, you know, they, they never, they never tried. It seems like they, they never run out of power. You know, they're always running and always pressing. And honestly, with the help of the fans, it's it's quite difficult to play there. So a guy like. Um, my favorite player. I mean, I was. I thought we were gonna do a video. I put on my Liverpool jersey for you. I even behind me, I have a Steven Gerrard poster. It's a whole thing. I set it up just. I set it up just for you. But it's uh, so. So who's? I always think. I always say Steven Gerrard is probably one of the most underrated players in the history of soccer. I mean, even though he was a great player, everybody acknowledged it. Who's the toughest guy you ever had to defend, or just one of the best players you ever had to watch live on the field? Um, defensively, I had to play against. Nice players against really good players like Bell, like Neymar, like mm -hmm. Messi, like Ronaldo too. Of course, yeah. But uh, the one who gave me a hard time was Victor Moses. Oh, really? Back in the days when he yeah. was at Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Especially one night, one night he was on fire and he gave me he gave me trouble. He put me in trouble, you know. Yeah. Because he was fast, he was skillful, and he was powerful. And and also they had only one game. During the weekend, while we had to, you know? okay. so so he's he fresh. Had a game and he moved. He moved later to to he moved later to to Chelsea. Neymar is difficult also because he's he's light and he's he's very fast. You know, on the first yeah. meters, his first push is really really strong. You know, and uh, because he's light, he can he can he can change direction easily. And and all of them, they have something special. You know, Gareth Bale is super fast. He's very fast and very powerful. Ronaldo, I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> I think we can watch it for ourselves. We can see Same it. Same right? for Messi. So, yeah. But the best player I've seen in life was probably Messi. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ball seems so easy for him. Yeah. yeah. It's like the ball is the ball. attached to a string and it doesn't leave his foot. You know what I mean? Like it just, the yeah, ball always like, comes back to him. Yeah. He has a quick mind, quick thinking, mm -hmm. you know, quick feet. So you went from uh, Man City, and then you came to Montreal, right? Uh, you were linked I went to, to Italy from Man City. You went to Italy, okay. So, you, but you were linked to mm -hmm. Olympiacos for for a little bit. They offered to sign you as well. It did, yeah. Okay, basically, when I uh, when I left City, I had a few offers, but um, I was not in a in the right shape of mind to to sign anywhere because. After after uh, after the end of my contract, I came uh, I came on a holiday here in Miami, okay, in US, and uh, and one of my friends really died in front of me. You know, he had a a stroke. 
Okay. So I was quite shocked. I was in shock, you know. So when I left back to 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 Europe, I stayed with my family and any team who were coming to me, I was I was referring them, you know. Why? I don't know. I just wanted to go home and, and stay in London, find a club in London and that's it. So I was in touch with a few clubs like West Ham, like Crystal Palace, but mm-hmm. it didn't happen for some reason. And uh, and then I didn't play for like six months because <laughs> You know, football is special. Sometimes to get into a team, you need to to be a bit weird and not only be straight. And I refused to do that, so I stayed six months without playing until until I traveled to to Italy because the president of the team I played for called me. Mm-hmm. So by respect, I went there and I felt good. But when I went there, I think I uh, I gave my uh, my answer, which was to sign for that team. Mm-hmm. And Olympiacos called me maybe the same day. Okay. But because I gave my word, I couldn't go back. And, yeah. uh, and I, I'm happy and I'm pleased I didn't, you know. Mm-hmm. I know my uh, my father would have been very happy if you signed with Olympiacos, for sure. I know that. <laughs> Why? Oh, he's a huge Olympiacos fan. He was the president of the Olympiacos fan club here. Uh, he's from Greece. Uh, he, you know, he lives and breathes uh, the red. You know, I mean, it's it's what he he would have loved you to play there. He's uh, your type, specifically his type <laughs> of player. Um, so you come to Montreal. You you play here for a year and a bit. Uh, now you're an ambassador. How's your experience been in the city of Montreal? Do you like the city? I know there's a lot of potholes and a lot of traffic, but for the most part, you know, do you like it? Oh, you know, I didn't like. I didn't. I didn't know Montreal. When I first came, first of all, I I mentioned before, but I thought it was on, on the other side of the country, you know. Yeah. And I started watching Montreal because of DJ. When he started playing there, I started watching and with a different eye. And then I got the opportunity to come, and I came. I didn't think too much. I came, and the first day I was amazed to see how big was the city, how cosmopolitan was the city, and and like that people were speaking French, you know. It's, mm-hmm. it's, very different. It's very strange to travel so <laughs> so far from home and and see like French speaking people with a uh, American or United States structure. You know, the yeah. buildings, everything is big. But uh, yeah, people are so nice here and very polite, and you don't see any animosity in town. Mm-hmm. And uh, respect is is everywhere. So I felt good straight away. I told my wife she she will feel good, and she did. When she came and and we stayed. Perfect. Well, we're ha- we're happy to have you in Montreal. It's a beautiful. I love Montreal. My favorite city in the world, even though I live here, of course. But uh, I love the food here. So I wanted to ask you, what's so far? What's been your favorite restaurant? You're friends with Mark, so I'm sure he's been taking you to a few restaurants. Ooh, I've been to a few restaurants. Like uh, I've been Milos. Great oh, Milos is good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I've been to Milos. I've been to Beatrice. Beatrice is one of my favorite yeah. restaurants here in town. Yeah, Beatrice is a nice one. Uh, Moretti's, uh, Fishbone. Oh, fish I, I, I went to few of them, you know? Yeah. I like eating, so. It's a it's a it's a beautiful city, and as soon as you start getting used to uh, the traffic, you start learning how to navigate through everything. You you're fine after that, right? So uh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. good. And we're happy. The traffic is not too bad, you know. It's not I that bad. But London, sometimes the traffic was crazy. So yeah, I can imagine London, uh, and even if you went to New York or Chicago, the the traffic over there is even worse. Yeah. So we're glad we're glad you came here uh, back. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll see you, we'll see you soon, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, back. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one.